In this video, I'm gonna test out the CME CNC Easy R Extruder on the Ender 3. I don't have a lot of problems with the standard extruder on the Ender 3. Probably my main complaint is that sometimes when I feed it in, the natural curl in the filament prevents it from going cleanly through and it likes to jam as I try and push it through into the Bowden tube on the other side. When I reviewed my first Ender 3, I tried flexibles and I had some success. I upped the extruder temperature, turned off the bed heater and conservatively slowed down the speed and managed to print this flexi octopus without too many dramas at all. Well, today I'm looking at the Easy R extruder from See Me CNC. At US $35, it's certainly not gonna break the bank and that boast claims of being a lot better at printing flexibles. Other things that stand out for me include a much high quality PTC fitting for the PTFE tube, as well as a clear top to assist with loading and unloading filament. And finally, a little dial on top replacing the extruder wheel so you can manually turn it to advance and retract the filament. With flexibles in mind, I devised a test to put it through its paces. But first, I needed a baseline. My aim was to design a piece that would expose the limits of extruding with flexibles. So I designed this piece in Onshape and I bought it into Simplified 3D and I set up speed from 10 at the bottom all the way up to 80 millimeters per second up the top. Now I figured somewhere up the tower that it would fail and after my first one I thought I had found that but upon closer inspection when I was printing the next piece the filament was actually getting snagged on my filament sensor when it came from the top. Therefore this test was very unreliable. I rigged up filament sitting to the side on a temporary stand and I reran the test, captured here in an octolapse and the results might surprise you. It ran perfectly the whole way from the bottom all the way up to 80 millimeters per second. I then ran a Flexi Octopus benchmarked against my Cocoon Create Touch with a Flexion Extruder and the results were also quite good at 40mm per second. Well, you'd have to say there's not a whole lot wrong with the performance of the standard extruder on the Ender 3. It managed to print flexibles all the way up to 80mm per second, which is pretty outstanding in my books. Anyways, let's move onwards with the installation of the EZR Extruder. So this extruder comes in a neat little bag with lots of hardware, in fact all the hardware that you're going to need and they have a really nice installation guide that has step-by-step -step pictures and even some videos. Here you can see I have a 3D printed extruder wheel on top and it allows you to manually move the filament in and out. I also have a very simple 3D printed filament guide in place. I started by pulling off the extruder wheel and then using a hex key to remove the three hex head bolts that you can see from the top. The one closest to the Z lead screw is one size up from the others. After these three are out, you can remove the bulk of the extruder and that will reveal the final bolt holding the whole thing together. You need to support the extruder from underneath because after you pull this one out, there's a fair chance everything is going to clatter down to the floor. Pull the parts away and that is disassembly complete. Now the new extruder fouled on my little filament remover but I didn't want to get rid of that because the entry position hasn't changed. Therefore I got a knife and a file and I spent about two minutes removing the bottom part as seen here. That way it could slide back on directly into place, not hitting anything, and the rest of the installation was very straightforward. I did my assembly slightly out of order from the instructions by putting on my drive gear only finger tight as one of the first steps. I could then lower the easy R down from the top and I found it a lot easier to align the bolts if I put them through and then lined up the holes visually before using a Phillips head screwdriver to secure one at a time. You only want to do them a little bit tight until all of them are in and then you can go back and re tighten completely. Now one potential tricky job is aligning the new hob drive gear. I chose to put some filament through, wind it back a couple of times to self-align, and then tighten the two grub screws on the hex key, once again using the filament to rotate everything around to reveal the second one. There's plenty of room to access them through the opening. Your Bowden tube can then go into the high quality fitting, but make sure you put on the little helper clip first. As I've shown in the past on this channel, using a printed part or a cable tie to hold the fitting out will prevent it from moving around and stop extrusion issues. It's really nice that this comes with a bunch built in. Well, that was a pretty neat and simple insole and it's probably worth noting there's a bunch of spares left, including more of those little fittings to hold the PTC connector nice and taut. Now, before we print, we need to do a little bit of calibration because anytime we change the hobbed gear that drives the extruder through, any little difference in diameter can have a big impact on printing. So that's our next step. You're gonna bring your hot end up to temp and then jam a ruler against the opening to the extruder and mark a line at 120 millimeters from the opening. Then in Octoprint Simplify 3D, Pronto Face, you're gonna extrude exactly 100 millimeters of filament. 
It's a pretty slow process, but eventually the 100 millimeters will go through and you'll be ready to remeasure. I had 22 millimeters remaining, therefore only 98 millimeters was extruded. Time for some light maths. We're gonna take our desired value 100 divided by a measured value, in my case 98, times it by the current E-steps, which for me is 93. This gives me a new E-steps of 94.86. The command to store this is M92E and then the new E-steps. You can enter it via a terminal and then M500 to save. If you're using an older version of the firmware without EEPROM, you'll have to insert the M92 line into your start G-code. That's the simple bit of calibration out of the way and it's time to get printing. I didn't think, however, it was worth printing the speed tower again because I didn't see that this would be any worse, therefore I'd just be wasting time and filament. Therefore, I moved on to the octopus. I reprinted the octopus with the new extruder, but exactly the same filament and G-code. I hope you agree it is impossible to tell the difference between the two. The stringing you see is from the Octolapse and not the fault of either extruder. I thought it would be a good idea to test the performance of PLA as well, so I did a Benchy, comparing it to one done just last week when I was testing M600 color change. And yes, I accidentally printed it at 240 degrees, but apart from that, it looks identical. Well, that confirms it for me. This EZR extruder is a nice part, but it's not what you could call a performance upgrade. And that's through no fault of its own. It's just that the standard hardware on the Ender 3 is very capable in doing its job. So what other reason would you have to spend 35 bucks on this? Well, the clear top is a nice touch, as is the hand wheel for manually advancing and retracting the extruder. I have to say my bugbear of loading and unloading filament was completely fixed with this design. It never got jammed once and I could easily load and remove filament, even this flexible TPU from X3D. So for me, it's not an essential purchase. It comes down to each individual to decide whether they wanna spend $35 to make their printer just a little bit nicer to use. Personally, I'm happy to leave it on here, but I'm eyeing off buying two more to fit to my A10M from GTEC because the extruders on that have given me far too much trouble. Have you used one of these? Do you think it's worthwhile? And have you got good flexible performance from the standard extruder? Please comment down below. That's gonna wrap this one up. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you wanna see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really wanna support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.